All right, yeah. Oh, uh, huh? One more thing. There was, uh, hold on. There was uh, another. Okay, all right. Um, oh, this is huge. Um, who sent this? Whoa. Hey guys, how are you all doing? Really, that's just great. You know, I'm doing pretty great today too because today we're finally taking a look at what was inside that box all of those months ago. Yeah, it's been, what, eight months already. Time just flies. But also, before we dive more into that, I do want to thank Fast Host for sponsoring today's episode and even better, they are hosting a giveaway as well where you can win your Ultimate Tech Bundle plus your dream PC setup worth up to 5,000 pounds. So if you're one of my awesome UK viewers, you can enter and you can possibly win that if you can answer the techie test question. I'll explain more later in the episode. Okay, so what do we got? Well, this is a MacBook. This is a mod book. So the mod book was a modified version of Apple's MacBook that was sold by a company called Axiotron. And you could buy these right from their website. In fact, they did a couple different versions of this, but this, uh, I think was the earliest, if not one of the earliest. A very big thanks to Sonny Dixon for helping me uh, get this, by the way. So I have not done a ton of research on this yet. I do plan to do more and dive into it, and I will do a full breakdown of the history and everything on a future Crazy Ken's Tech Talk episode, so make sure you're subscribed and stay tuned for that. But today, what I'm gonna do is just explore it for the first time and kind of just get my first impressions out. I'm gonna boot it up and test drive it, but even better, I have brought Heidi back to the lair and she is gonna do some drawing on this thing to see how well she can do it and to see how well it works because I can't draw for crap. Now, the art on our YouTube channel, that's all done by Heidi. Same person, she's gonna be in the lair and she was also the same person that tested out the koala pad in that episode like about two years ago. That was a pretty good one if you haven't seen that yet. So, lots of fun to be had. Let's go ahead and plug this baby in and see how it works. All right, so here it is. And you can see we have our little eyesight camera there. And the stylus just kind of hides away right here in this little compartment. And uh, I haven't figured out quite yet what this button does, but that does obviously look like the power button there. And it just uses MagSafe. It has all the same ports that the other, you know, regular MacBook would have. So MagSafe works. Let's go ahead and power it up. Lights. CD drive. And the startup chime. And let's see how it works. Hey, there's the Apple. Uh, the backlight is a little bit low. I'm gonna have to turn that up, or at least it's low on this angle. Oh yeah, that's right. These old, well, I don't remember what year this particular model is. I think it's like 08 or 09, but these old panels don't have like the greatest angle of view because I'm just off axis by a little bit and it looks crazy dark, but if I lean forward just like five inches, it gets so much brighter. But yeah, let's go ahead and see how this works here. And the stylus input seems pretty responsive and accurate. So that's nice. Oh, the brightness is all the way up. All right, well, <laughs> I guess it's, we just don't have the greatest angle of view with this thing. But yeah, let's go ahead and see what we're working with. We have Mavericks, that's 1095. Now, this is a dual core 64-bit 2.13 gigahertz processor, pretty sweet, six gigabytes of RAM. And the startup disk is called SSD, so I'm guessing there's an SSD in here. Since we do have stylus input, I would imagine we have the Mac features for that. Uh, Inkwell, I believe it's called. So we have the ink panel here. I haven't used a stylus much. Like, I used to have a Wacom tablet, but that was a long time ago. Looks like we have some fonts for the ink pad we can write on. Apple Casual kind of looks like a slightly more professional version of Comic Sans, I guess you could call it. And yep, languages, gestures. Let's see what we got here. Oh, cool, so we can draw little gestures to... Oh, I never actually experimented with these before, so we can do kind of like this to cut. That's pretty cool. All right, so that's some of the Inkwell stuff, and then down here it looks like we have pen tablet. Now, oh, this must be a 32-bit panel. That's why it has to relaunch. Tablet version mismatch. Please reinstall the tablet software. Um, okay, not sure about that. Yeah, Chrome, da 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 da. We have Sketchbook Pro, Photoshop CS6, Illustrator CS6, uTorrent. Um, Sublime Text, not sure what that is. 
Well, let's go ahead and bust open Photoshop here and just do a quick test. And then we'll let the real pro come in. So yeah, it looks like we have our our panels here. Let's uh, the workspace looks a little effed up. So let's just reset to essentials here. And that did a load of nothing. Oh, it's probably because I don't have a document open. The application frame is off. Oh, there it is down here. Application frame. There we go. So we can go to file new, make a document here. I can't type in numbers. So we're gonna leave it at 3,000 by 2,000. Wow, the angle of view on this thing is really bad. I'm like, I'm like, I have to like hold it like here to actually see something. But there's no way to prop this up with like the built-in hardware. You'd have to find like a third-party solution for that or something. Um, I, I mean, most animators and drawers would typically work on a slant anyway. This is like very unergonomic. Don't really like hunch over your tablet, please. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it, it's responding to the to the handwriting here. So that's not too shabby. Let's see here. What other buttons do we get? Does, does this trigger the eraser? Yes, it does. You can erase just by pressing down the other side of the stylus there, no problem. Uh, I'm not an expert drawer by any stretch of the imagination. I'll just draw my good old Mac Picasso face. That is the extent of my artistic abilities right there. Before we bring Heidi in here, let's just pay homage to the original Macintosh from 1984. Let's, let's just make sure our thing's working. Okay, good, it is. We'll just go undo the brush. And let's just do our good old hello. Boop. There we go. Just like 1984. So yeah, it's a this is pretty responsive. Like there's like no latency or lag here. This is pretty great. I just do want to before I bring Heidi in here, I do want to check some hardware stuff. I wonder if we can find like any hardware indicator in here that tells us like what the stylus input is. Let's see. In the USB device tree here, we have Axiotron Modbook, and then we have an ISD V4, which I guess is some, something related to a tablet. It says tablet right there. And then we have the Axiotron Modbook hardware controller, which looks like it's running through some sort of like older USB interface. Possibly it says 12 megabits per second. So that's definitely slower than what you would have with USB 2. So that's interesting. Yeah, there's some kind of controller here on the USB bus. That was like, that was redundant. I just said universal serial bus bus, but hey, whatever. This is crazy Ken, we can break the rules. So now I'm gonna bring Heidi out here and she's gonna draw something much better than what I can do. Let's do it. Okay, so I borrowed Heidi again. So Heidi, just uh, as a quick recap, what do you normally draw on and with? Um, well, lately I just draw on an iPad and uh, it's really nice, but for a really long time, I would just use my Wacom tablet and that thing lasted for like, 10 years, give or take. Mm -hmm. What software do you use? For the longest time, I just always used Photoshop, but um, I really like Clip Studio Paint, and since I got my iPad, I learned how to use Procreate, and that's pretty easy, and uh, yeah, it's fun. All right, so we have Photoshop on here. Go ahead and give it a whirl. All right, I'm just gonna... So what are you gonna draw for us to warm up? I'm going to attempt to draw Pusheen Cat. All right. <laughs> So while Heidi is working on that drawing, let's just take a quick moment and talk about that giveaway I was mentioning earlier. Fast Host is generous enough to be hosting that, and you have a chance to win that Ultimate Tech Bundle plus your Dream PC setup. But who is Fast Hosts? Fast Hosts is a UK-based web hosting company which offers a wide range of web hosting products and other services. Whether you're a beginning businessman or an expert entrepreneur, they provide effective and affordable hosting packages to suit any need. You can easily register affordable domain names with a variety of TLDs like .uk Ooh. or .com. And their website builder lets you create beautiful mobile-ready websites without writing code. You can get three months free, and if you're not satisfied in the first 30 days, you can cancel your contract without paying a penny. Now here's the fun part. If you're in the UK, you can enter into the Fast Host giveaway where you can win your ultimate tech bundle and dream PC setup worth up to 5,000 pounds. All you have to do is click the link in the description and answer this techie test question correctly. What was the clock speed of the CPU in the first white Apple MacBook that Apple sold? Click the link in the description and fill out your answer and best of luck. I hope you can win the giveaway. And again, it's all thanks to Fast Hosts. Their data centers are based in the UK alongside their offices. And whether you go for a lightweight web hosting package or a fully fledged dedicated box, you can talk to their expert support teams 24 seven. Okay, let's see how the drawing is going. Do your thing. 
<laughs> I did it again. Oh. I tried to use two fingers to undo. It's just... Because your iPad can do that, right? Yes. Yeah, we don't have that capacitive touchscreen luxuriness with this rare device. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, and just... it does feel a bit awkward. It's not as crisp and smooth and That's responsive. That's true, because you have a retina display on your iPad with 120 hertz refresh rate. This is, uh, like, not even HD and 60 hertz. <laughs> So you're spoiled. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's looking pretty good. And um, test out the eraser just to make sure. Uh, I just want to get this correct. Oh, yeah, get that. Anybody who knows Pusheen Cat is going sweet. to be like, you're missing the little stripes on her head or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's probably too big. Hey, it works. Nice. All right. Not bad. There's Pusheen. Pusheen Cat. All right, well, whenever you're ready, uh, go ahead and file new and open up another. I could just make a new layer and just... Or a new layer, you fancy kids using your... La when I grew up, Photoshop 1 had one layer. <laughs> one layer and one level of undo. We suffered. All right, so now I'm going to try to draw Retzko. Oh, yes. Love <laughs> I've only drawn her a few times, but... I love Retzko. I almost did the or, two fingers again. <laughs> or you can do the eraser. That's oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh yeah, the Apple Pencil doesn't have an eraser, that's right. And now I did something even worse. I went like this as if I was drawing traditionally, and it's like, oh god, I mean, gotta a... swipe away the eraser schnibbins. Dude, that, that would be like quite the virtual experience that actually creates a eraser bar. Well, that's just um, force of habit, yeah? Yep. <laughs> what? Meeny, meeny, miny, mo. Undo or eraser. Mm -hmm. I know. Oh my gosh, that's that's hilarious. Because like, you've probably done that a billion times in your sketchbook, so it's just programmed into your brain. I guess when I'm drawing digitally, like on my iPad, my instinct is just go undo. But right. what I'm drawing traditionally, like obviously you got to use the eraser, and then my instinct is to go like this. <laughs> so it's like I don't have an eraser on my uh, Apple Pencil. Right. So, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I think that is kind of like an interesting... Like psych that could be like a cool psychological case study in like motor, <laughs> like um like muscle memory and like motor skills. Hey, there's happy non-rage Let's go. What else? Was there something else you wanted to draw? Maybe um <coughs> XJ9. Oh yeah. <laughs> I love drawing XJ9. <laughs> XJ9 is a badass. So uh yeah, let's go ahead and try it out. Actually, I could probably draw this without a reference. Okay, so we have two handicaps, a new device, and no reference. Okay. Now just the general look of Jenny is pretty easy to draw. You just got like a little circle here, mm -hmm. right? And then she's got like this harsh cheek. She got that cheek thing, yeah. Going on there. This would have taken me probably a half hour to do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually really surprised at how slow I'm drawing it. <laughs> well, you're, you're on a new device you've been using for all of like six minutes. So. All right, and she cut, has these little like, Cut yourself some snack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Her arms look too short. <laughs> the arms do look a touch yes. short, but the head is definitely better. Uh -huh. Yeah, the eraser doesn't really have great precision. <laughs> hmm. Because it's, probably... it's just this round thing. <laughs> oh, so you mean like on a tactile level? Yeah, like, like I, I, I can't really aim it properly. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, and even the, uh, the actual stylus itself, like what you draw with, doesn't have that great aim either. You're probably spoiled by the Apple Pencil. Yes. <laughs> and you have even the older Apple Pencil. Okay, so like literally like five minutes ago, Greg uh, from Rutk Mods, buddy of mine, just got a mod book. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, he said, I literally just got one and was going to ask you if you wanted to try it. Well, <laughs> hey, Greg is awesome. He's loaned me a few things before, but like, dang it, like we're... we're I already spent the money on this one. <laughs> oh, well. Um, we're here. Man, this thing is getting hot. And I, oh. don't, I don't mean sexy hot. I mean, it's just, it's burning. <laughs> hey, can, you mind if I feel it? I mean, the screen's are not too it's warm. It's especially hot where I had my hand. Hmm. Feel? Yeah, it's like warmer on this side. Oh, on the bezel, yeah. Definitely on the bezel over here. Now we got two classic Nickelodeon characters. Sweet. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit older, but how does it feel? What do you think? Well, uh, it feels like I miss my iPad. <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> it's really not that bad mm -hmm. uh, compared to the uh, the Koala Pad, right? 
Oh, yeah, the Koala <laughs> pad, yeah. 1983, I think. Money aside, would this be a thing that you would have bought back in the day? I imagine if I purchased something like this around the time it was made, I probably would have been like, oh, this is kind of fun. This is kind of cool. And then I would get frustrated and then just go back to traditional drawing because <laughs> that's like way easier. Oh, yeah. But uh, I'm sure I would poke around with like the settings and try to get it to work as best as it can. And mm -hmm. uh, you can actually probably make some decent art with this. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to spend some more time with it and um, tweak it up. And when I do my follow-up episode, um, if you would love to do the honors and do like one final drawing... Uh, I think it would be great to have you back and do one more piece. What do you think? Yeah, absolutely. All right. Sounds good. Because, yeah, it would be cool to... Oh, we, oh, we got color. Oh, well, look out now. <laughs> we got color now. <laughs> Wonderful world of color. <laughs> uh. So thank you, Heidi, for blessing us with your artistic skills. Now, some of you may be wondering, how do you interact with this thing other than the pen? Well, again, it does have the traditional MacBook ports on it, so you can plug in a USB mouse or a USB keyboard and I actually dug into the box a little bit more, and the previous owner gave me a little keyboard, so I could use that in conjunction with the pen. But also, we do have this little menu thing here. If we say hide keyboard, it shows the keyboard. I don't know, it glitches out sometimes. And this is the quick clicks interface. So if I was typing, let's say, and I didn't have a physical keyboard, I could use this. Sometimes it's a little laggy, and you notice it has a little typewriter sound as well. Now, that could get annoying pretty quick, but you can turn that off. So if we go to the preferences, we have a smart transparency option, so after you don't use it for a while, it just kind of fades away. And you could turn off the typewriter sound if you want. So pretty sweet. Again, stay tuned because I will revisit this and do more of a deep dive into the history of it and into the design. But in the meantime, actually while I was taping this first impressions episode, Quinn from Snazzy Labs released his own video and it's freaking amazing. So go check that out. And I'm pretty sure that will be able to hold you over until I release my follow-up. But I also have plenty of other episodes planned. Knockoff tech, new tech, old tech. Man, it's going to be great. Definitely stick around. If you like this episode, you know what to do. Thanks for sticking with me. Catch the crazy and pass it on. Mm -hmm.